How's it going? I'm Brad from PedalPowerGenerator.com. You're probably watching this because you want to make electrical power using the energy from your body. And you're trying to pick out a DC permanent magnet motor to use as a generator to hook up to your bicycle. The things you should consider when you're picking out a DC motor are first, the voltage rating of the motor. Second, the speed that the motor was engineered to run at. That's also measured in something called RPMs or revolutions per minute. The next thing you should consider is the current rating of the motor. That's to say how many amps can flow through this wire into the motor around the armature and back out the wire before you cause damage to the motor, you know, overheat it. The next thing you should consider on the motor is does it have replaceable brushes? A lot of the cheaper DC motors have brushes that are inside the motor so when they wear out you gotta throw the motor away. Other motors have covers over the brushes so you can remove the cover put in a three dollar brush and then you're good to go again. The last thing to consider is if the motor has brass bushing bearings or ball bearings. Some of the cheaper motors have brass bushing bearings they wear out a little bit quicker than the ball bearings. So today we're going to go ahead and look at the Leeson DC permanent magnet motor model number M1120046. It has a voltage rating of 24 volts. It can handle 14 amps of current and also it's ready to run at 3900 RPM. It has replaceable brushes and the bearings are also replaceable. Let's go ahead and take a look at how it works on a controlled drive source so you can see how much voltage comes out of the motor when you turn it at different speeds. Alright, this is the test setup we're going to use to go ahead and measure the uh, voltage output of this permanent magnet motor. First we have a voltmeter, it's set to DC voltage and it's set to the 200 volt range. Uh, we have some uh, patch cords right here that clip onto the to the end of these test leads. These, these are called alligator clips because then they grab on, they feel like alligators. And I'm uh, going to use this tachometer right here. It's a laser tachometer. Uh, it's kind of cool. And it shines on a piece of reflective tape. So right here is a piece of reflective tape. And the, the laser hits that and that tells us how fast that it's spinning. We got here a, a six inch bench vise, a one horsepower motor, and a controller to control that one horsepower motor. So we're going to go ahead and start and mount this guy in here. Let's see here. Yeah, I kind of like that. Tighten it up real gently because this housing can warp. Then we're going to go ahead and clip on these test leads here, like that. Make sure they don't touch or else you'll damage the motor, so you spread them apart. If you just spin this with your fingers, you can see right here it's going 1.6, 1.5, 2 .0. There we go. Now we're going to go ahead and spin it up to different speeds and see what kind of voltage it puts out. So I'll go ahead and turn it on. So right now we're we're putting out 3.4 volts and that's at uh, 600 RPM. Now let's go ahead and next level. Now we're putting out 7.9 volts. And that's at 1,370 RPM. Okay, now we have 11.5 volts and it's sitting at 1,983 RPM. 1,984. 
faster. Okay, now we're putting out 20 volts. Moving pretty good. And this is 3,460 RPM. Pretty good. And it wrote, write all these values down right here. And you can put them in Excel. All right, the data that we collected is now put into Excel, and this is the graph from the data. The vertical axis shows you the DC voltage output from the generator. The horizontal axis shows you revolutions per minute, or how fast the motor is spinning. If you're going to go ahead and store your energy into a lead-acid 12-volt battery, you'll, go ahead and you'll need to operate your generator in the 12 to 15 voltage range. The red area highlighted on the chart shows you that range and it corresponds to approximately a, a 2500 RPM speed. To make this data more meaningful, we need to convert it to a unit of measurement that we're all used to, like miles per hour. The first step is to go ahead and convert pulley RPM to rear tire RPM. You can do that by calculating the turn ratio between the 2 inch generator pulley and the 26 inch diameter rear bicycle tire. If you go ahead and divide 26 by 2, you'll go ahead and get a 13 to 1 turn ratio. So that means if you divide the pulley RPM by 13, you'll get your tire RPM. Once you have that, you can use this formula. You can multiply your rear tire RPM by 6.8 feet per revolution times 60 minutes per hour times 1 mile over 5,280 feet that'll give you miles per hour. This graph is showing you the same data except now the horizontal axis is showing you miles per hour instead of RPMs. Again the red zone is showing you that if you operate your generator in the 12 to 15 voltage range you'll be able to charge a lead acid battery and save your energy. The horizontal axis is showing you that you'll have to pedal somewhere between 14 to 16 miles per hour to charge that lead acid 12 volt battery and store your energy for later use. It's good to know here that if you want a child to go ahead and create this same level of voltage you'll have to pick a motor out that has a higher voltage rating. A higher voltage rating means that you'll be able to pedal a lot slower to achieve the same amount of voltage. The well there you have it. Now you know that if you hook up a Leeson model number M112 0046 DC permanent magnet motor to your rear tire that you'll have to pedal between 14 to 16 miles per hour to store your energy in a lead acid battery or better yet a power pack. A power pack has a lead acid battery inside of it. It also has an AC inverter so you can store your energy in here until you need it. When you're ready to use your power you can go ahead and flip up the door right here and you can plug in a laptop, uh, a blender, a power drill, anything that has an AC 110 volt rating under 400 watts of power. It also has a built-in tire pump and a flashlight and jumper cables for your car. So it's a great way to store your energy. Whenever you're charging a lead acid batteries you need to hook up your generator to a car to a charge controller. This one's made by Xantrex. It's the Model C40. It can handle 40 amps of current. It was designed to work with wind turbines and with solar panels. It'll also work in this application. If you follow the detailed instructions in the owner's manual, it will tell you exactly how to wire things up safely. So you pick the right wire size and you use the proper fuses. If you want to learn more about making your own bicycle generator, Go ahead and check out the videos and the instructions at pedalpowergenerator.com and good luck.